presented for your enjoyment by the Christian. There's not a single verse in the New Testament that commands us to tithe. He told his disciples in Luke 6, you must learn to give, not tithe, but give. And in the measure in which you give, it, God will give to you. So the New Testament commandment for disciples is not nothing, but giving replaces tithing. It's important how we give. That means Jesus said, when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand will do. That means give it secretly. And 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, give cheerfully. In other words, not how much you give, which is old covenant, but how you give, which is new covenant. So God's not seeing whether you calculated 10% exactly and gave it. And some people say, well, if you preach like that, nobody will give anything. That's right. Some people are such misers, which probably proves they're not even converted, and they won't give anything. Well, God does, God's not a beggar, and he's not going to squeeze them to get money out of them. God, God's got enough grateful children to support his work. He doesn't need to squeeze the accounts of misers to get money for his work. God's work will go on wonderfully. The question is, why do we give? My giving was out of gratitude. I was grateful for Jesus having given his life for me. And I said, Lord, I can use this to help the poor or help your servants or help your work to go further. I buy some Bibles for poor people and maybe give books to those who couldn't afford to buy them and do good to people with that. So that's a good thing to do. I mean, if God's given you more than enough for your needs, it's good to share some of it with others. But then there's also a matter of righteousness. For example, if you go to a church regularly and use its facilities, there's a lot of expenses a church has for lighting and so many other things. If you use the facility, uh, it's like asking, would you pay rent for a house you live in? If you go to a church facility, you should be upright and share in the expenses of that church. That's righteous. It's totally unrighteous of a Christian to go and stay in a hotel and not pay for it, pay his bill. Totally unrighteous to take advantage of facilities in a church and not pay for all the expenses there. And if there are servants of the Lord there who are supported by the church and you feel that the ministry in the church is edifying. I don't believe in supporting any art ministry. But if you find the ministry in the church is edifying and building you up, then you have to look at it as a doctor who's treated you and uh, healed you of some sickness. When you pay such a doctor, I find Christians are very upright in paying doctors who treat them for their body and don't care much about people who have done something far more important for their soul. So the Bible says that the laborer is worthy of his hire. So there's nothing wrong in supporting a person who is blessed you. There's nothing wrong. Paul says there's nothing wrong in supporting such a person but you have to be careful also you have to be wise i think a lot of giving is very unwise it's no use supporting a church which has already got plenty of money you'd rather better to give it to some poor church and certainly not to all these television evangelists who are fleecing money from people to live in a grand lifestyle themselves so be secret in your giving be cheerful in your giving and be wise and faithful in giving and then the question of percentage is totally unimportant give according to your need it's saying if you're not born again you can't give to god if you've got a grudge against somebody that's not settled you can't give to god if you're, a, if you're in debt clear i don't mean a mortgage a mortgage is not in debt because you've got a house to replace the money taken but any other debt that you have you should clear that just dance if you're caught up in the holy ghost train Baby, I got your mind. I, I, I bleed the blood over you, man. Jesus.